This channel and video is sponsored by Ratchet Clothing. The link to their website will be down in the description. Go check out their many styles, especially their Christmas collection. Today I'm going to speak about an interesting murder, one that received an official nod from Chin Gigante. This is a topic that's also been covered by other channels. I'll do my best to put a different spin on what took place by adding some unreported details. 31-year-old Nathaniel Nat Maselli obviously idolized his father, Pellegrino William Maselli, nicknamed Billy the Butcher for a wholesale meat company, Pellegrino Maselli Meats, he owned in the Bronx. Maselli Sr. was also a partner in a construction and trucking company called Joe Pell, a company he co-owned with State Senator Joseph L. Gallupa. Joe Pell was a subcontract on several New York City subway contracts. One of the general contractors they did work for was Shivoni Construction. At the time, Raymond Donovan was the labor secretary, but also the vice president and 40% owner of Shivoni. Legal trouble for Joe Pell and Donovan began when Special Prosecutor Leon Silverman was appointed to lead an investigation looking into allegations of Donovan's connection to members of organized crime. Shivoni Construction reportedly had ties to the Genovese family, and according to Silverman, one of those ties came in the form of their subcontractor, Joe Pell, as well as Maselli Sr., who was identified as a member of the Genovese family. It was also alleged that Donovan was present during a payoff to a union official, all accusations which he was eventually indicted for. During this time, Maselli Sr. was serving a seven-year sentence for hijacking and narcotics. This was the result of the FBI tapping phones at Joe Pell, as well as planting listening devices in Maselli's private office. The surveillance produced more than 90 hours of taped conversations, including hijackings, narcotics, and political influence in both state and city construction projects. During Silverman's investigation, Maselli Sr. was transferred from a prison in Lake Placid to the MCC in Manhattan. The sole purpose for the transfer was Maselli's scheduled appearance before a federal grand jury. While at the MCC, Maselli received a visit from his son Nat. What they spoke about remains unknown, but most likely the younger Maselli being caught up in Silverman's investigation as well, where he supposedly met with the special prosecutor several times. There were allegations of Nat Maselli cooperating and taping conversations, but the only known tapes were the ones recorded while speaking to a Shivoni lawyer. Naturally, during this time, word on the street would be to act cautious around the younger Maselli. The reason for the caution is, these investigations produce paperwork, which is eventually handed over to the defense as part of discovery material. According to Vincent Fisk Cafaro, a former member of the Genovese family, one day he was standing on the corner of 116th Street in Harlem talking to the family's underboss, Sammy Santora. When Philip Philly Bono showed up, Bono was a fellow member of the family as well. Bono produced paperwork regarding Nat Maselli. After reading it, Santoro said, well, this can hurt you. Bono agreed and added that he did a few things with the kid, meaning the young Maselli. Santoro told him that he would get back to him the next day. When Bono left, Cafaro asked Santoro what he was going to do. Santoro told him he was going to go down and see the skinny guy and the chin. The skinny guy was in reference to Bobby Manor, the family's consigliere, and Chin obviously being the boss. Santoro made the trip to 208 Sullivan Street in Manhattan, where Chin had his Triangle Social Club. When Cafaro seen Santoro that following day, he asked how the meeting with Chin and Manor went. Santoro explained that he got an okay for Philly, meaning that he received the green light to kill Maselli. On the night of August 26, 1982, after his visit with his father at the MCC, Nat Maselli drove to a Bronx social club located at 151st Street and Morris Avenue in the Bronx. He had a conversation outside the club with Philly Bono and another Genovese member, Salvatore Salio Oderno. At this point in time, Bono would have already received word from Santora that he had the green light to handle Maselli. After the meeting at the social club, Nat Maselli drove his 1977 Lincoln Continental to Van Cortland Park in the Bronx. According to witnesses, the Lincoln was parked between East 238th Street and 239th Street. They witnessed Maselli's Continental crash into a parked car in front of it. Then they seen a man jump out of the passenger side and run towards a red Pontiac. One of the witnesses chased after who he later identified as Oderno with a tire iron. Nat Maselli remained in the driver's seat, dead from a 38 caliber bullet to his head. The getaway car, a 1980 red Pontiac, would be traced back to Oderno. The car was found in Brooklyn, wiped clean of any fingerprints. Oderno would be arrested soon after. Bono wouldn't be arrested for the murder until the following month on September 15th. 
While in Rankers Island, supposedly O'Donnell spoke about the incident to a jailhouse informant, who also testified under an assumed name, William Burns. He explained that both he and Bono were in Maselli's car to ensure that the elder Maselli would keep quiet and not cooperate. He sat in the passenger seat and Bono was in the back, which coincides with witness accounts that a heavyset guy was getting out of the rear of the Continental. He also told Burns he got into an argument with Maselli and smacked him. Maselli accidentally put the car in drive, hit the gas, and crashed into the car in front of him. Allegedly, the impact of the crash caused a listening device to fall from Maselli's possession. According to Burns, Oderno told him that he yelled to Bono, My God, the fuck is Wyatt, shoot him, Philly. Oderno was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to 8 and a third to 25 years. According to FBI agent Paul Deeper, during an interview with Bono, he asked how was it possible that the Maselli murder could have taken place, being his close relationship with the Maselli family, and how they were all involved in organized crime. I guess what he was saying was they were all members of the same family. Allegedly, Bono responded, If you believe in those things, if an order comes down, you have to do what you have to do. Whether he made this statement or not is not known to me, but if he did in fact make it, it directly points to his guilt. Bono was convicted of intentional murder and sentenced to 20 years to life. In an interesting twist, two months prior to the Maselli murder, a guy named Fred Farino was found in the trunk of his car parked in Manhattan. Farino was on record with Salvatore Sally Bugs Braguglio, and he would mostly collect money for him. Sally Bugs is considered a prime suspect in the disappearance of Teamster President Jimmy Hoffa. Farino was actually called before a federal grand jury investigating Hoffa's disappearance, but he invoked his Fifth Amendment. The interesting connection is Farino was interviewed by Prosecutor Leon Silverman regarding the allegations against Raymond Donovan. Leon Silverman ended his nine-month investigation, concluding he found no credible evidence linking Donovan to organized crime. He further stated he didn't think Nat Maselli's murder had any connection to his investigation into Donovan. A ridiculous statement being it came to light that June before the murder took place, Silverman disclosed a report which stated the elder Maselli was cooperating with the federal investigation and his son did indeed tape conversations. This story has many twists and turns, but one thing's for certain. The Genovese family was involved in the construction aspect of this case, and anyone they considered a threat was silenced. Philly Bono started serving his sentence at the age of 68. Most of his time was spent at Easton Correction Facility, where he became good friends with both my former associate, Pete Bartolomeo, and Patty Flynn. I previously made a video about Patty, and I'll add the link in the description below. Here's a picture of Philly Bono and Patty Flynn at Easton. Here's another bit of information. Selwyn Robb, former investigating reporter for the New York Times and author, mentioned that Maselli Sr. granted him an interview, and he achieved this by not referring to Maselli by his nickname, Billy the Butcher, but by addressing him as Mr. Maselli. Maselli praised Robb for showing him that respect and rewarded him by agreeing to be interviewed. The two men met in secret and discussed details about the mob. Maybe one day the notes from that interview will become another book. At about 8.15 p.m. last evening, August the 26th, a Mr. Nat Maselli of Scarsdale, New York, while operating his private vehicle, was shot in the rear of the head. It was pronounced DOA at the scene. One or possibly two perpetrators may have been involved. It appears at this time that it was one shot in the spine. Uh, a car was used by the perpetrators as an escape vehicle. We're looking for this car now. Uh, Mr. Maselli, Mr. Nat Maselli, is the son of Pellegrino Maselli, who is currently under investigation by federal authorities. We are currently looking into all aspects of Mr. Nat Pellegrino activities. We are in conference with federal, state, and city investigative units and seeking our assistance in the solution of this crime. Witness uh, told us he saw a man running from the car and getting into another car. Did he describe that car? To get away? We have a brief description, but it's not complete and thorough, and at this point we're not going to release it to you. Do you have anybody lined up as a possible suspect? That's at this right. moment we haven't. Any. No suspects? No suspects at all. Can you give us some background, please, on Mr. Matheson? Uh, just that he's a male, white, 31 years of age, and he lives in Scarsdale, New York. And, and as I at, state, he uh, I understand he's with a construction outfit in Long Island. We're looking into his activities, as I said previously, at this time. The same construction outfit with his father? Who is he and where is he? 
He's incarcerated in a, by the federal authorities. Uh, we're looking into that further at this time now. Inspector, the, son, the sons were the same company as his father? The sons were the same company? We're trying to determine now his activities now, whether he's connected with his father and to what extent. What is his father in prison for? Pardon? What is his father in prison I, for? We're in connection with the, we're, we're contacted the federal authorities trying to determine what he's in for, what he's involved with at this time. Inspector, this has all the earmarks of a mob rub out. No question about that. Is there? Uh, you, it possibly looks at that way at this time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to hit the like button. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you could do that as well. And I appreciate everyone who has. If you feel friends and family might enjoy the video, please share it and thank you. You can subscribe to the Sit Down News blog at sitdownnews.com. And I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Well, just another example in the mob you never knew about. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you can do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description to this video.